Hello everybody and thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a lovely classic chalk stream dry fly pattern called the Tups Indispensable. The hook I'm using is a size 16 dry fly hook, this one's from Fulling Mill, and the thread, which I'll also be using to make the rear half of the body, is this beautiful pale yellowy gold silk. Now whenever working with silk it does pay to wax your thread. This not only deepens the colour, but also provides a bit of water resistance. The tails and the head hackle are going to be this nice creamy tan done. And this is a Whiting Hebert Minor saddle, a little variant, so plenty of options in there. Now this fly uses one of the most unique dubbing blends I think I've ever seen. The original recipe specifies a mixture of wool from the indispensable part of a tup, which is a breeding ram, aka its testicles, along with some lemon yellow spaniel fur, some hare's mask, and a little bit of red seal's fur. Vicuña dubbing does a nice colour matched substitute, which will spare you the need to go around the business end of a breeding sheep. So with our materials ready we can get started. I'm going to cast on my thread just behind the hook eye, leaving a couple of millimetres space so we don't crowd the eye. Make a few wraps backwards, and then trim away the excess. I'm using well waxed silk here, so it'll hold nicely, it's got a lot of grip to it. And then, once everything's ready, we can run it back down the length of the hook shank, going all the way down towards the tail. Laying down a little bit of a thread base, trying to make nice even turns. The silk's a fairly thick material, so if you do get some mislaid turns, it quite quickly builds up and can create a lumpy body. Here I've taken a pinch of about 10 fibres of my nice dun cock cape. I'm going to tie that in directly over the end of the tail, and working forwards with my silk, secure everything down to about the 50% mark on the hook shank. Then lifting up the butts, trim away the excess, and secure down. I'm just trying to build up a little bit of bulk where we're going to be wrapping the silk, without going too far forwards into the thorax. Working back down the length of the body, and taking it all the way to the tie-in point of the tails, just trying to make some nice touching turns of silk, avoid disturbing the tail, and wrapping back forwards, again touching turns, just building up a little bit of a yellowy body. The colours on this fly work very nicely together. Obviously with dubbing you've got the yellows and the reds and the creams all coming through, and it creates a very natural, very translucent, buggy looking effect. Now we've got a gentleman called R.S. Austin to thank for this pattern and the dubbing mixture that goes with it. Austin was a tobacconist in Devon, who also had a fly tying business alongside his shop. He tied this fly in around 1890 to 1900 or so, and found it very very effective, especially when there were pale midges or pale olives hatching. He sent a sample of the dubbing and the recipe to G.E.M. Skews, who is of course one of the all-time greats of Chalkstream fly fishing, Skews followed his instructions and tied up some flies, and tested it extensively on the itchin. He was impressed by the fly's performance, and given that the pattern didn't have a name yet, dubbed it the Tops Indispensable, referencing both the unusual source of the dubbing, and also the fact that it was so good that he deemed it indispensable in one's fly box. The dubbing mixture remained a closely guarded secret, only Skews, Austin, and some of his immediate family members knew the recipe. This gave Austin effectively a monopoly on tying the fly, although we do have reports that he was absolutely sick of tying the thing up after a while. But anyway, in 1934, 20 years after Austin's death, the recipe was made public. Luckily nowadays we've got some substitutes, which I'm sure smell rather better than the original. Whilst I was talking, I've tied in my hackle and I'm bringing that forwards, making about five or six turns in total, securing off with my silk. When you're using silk and it's well waxed, a couple of turns is absolutely fine for securing down hackles. It's a very grippy material. With the hackle secure, bend everything backwards, make a couple of turns, and then whip finish, building up a small, neat head. This is still a very effective fly today. Pale midges, small olives, anything that's light in colour, can be a really really effective pattern. And just look at the colour combinations. We've got that lovely reddish yellowy greeny beige dubbing, nice yellow rich golden silk and the colours of the hackle. It all matches up and it's a lovely combination. I've trimmed off my silk, can trim off the hackle and that's the fly finished. Here's a look around. Again, it's a lovely colour combination, in a classic dry fly shape. 
do give this one a go. Like I said, Vicuña dubbing does a nice substitute, or you can blend up your own if you're feeling brave. Either way, it's an easy enough pattern to tie, and a lovely classic. So do give this one a go. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.